Yes, sir. Okay, so I think we have covered the week two summary in the last session, right? Have we discussed the practice assignment question? Yes, anyone? Week one practice assignment, sir. Week two? No, no sir. Week two, week two now. Okay, week two we have I not just discussed. Go with the theory and summary. So one I have got in week one. It's little bit only. Can I ask? Oh. Hmm, yes, tell me. 1.7 question number four. Okay. Just a second. Let me open. One point seven. Yeah, question number four. One point seven, question number four. <laughs> A variable data type does not constrain the operation that can be performed on it, right? Yeah. That's the variable data type does not constrain the operation that can be performed on it. So why it's false? Mm. Sir, so what are we are doing in this lecture? Uh, yes, week two we'll discuss practice assignment. Okay. Variable so data type does not constrain. Three? Week three content is not released yet. I have just seen now. So yeah, maybe we'll release today, tonight or tomorrow. Okay. So there is okay. some problem uh, in graded assignment one of computational thinking. Oh. Question number fifth. It's wrong question. Yeah, so I think that question got updated, right? Two, three, three, yes, right? Uh, yesterday it was updated. Uh, mm -hmm. Previously it was another question and yesterday it was updated. And the question uh, was so completely wrong. Mm -hmm. But I okay. pick randomly five answers, it, it is correct. I, I will I will remove that question from evaluation, okay? Okay, sir. So, we will so not consider we get, that. Okay, so we'll be getting bonus marks for that question. Bonus mark means like out of nine question only you will, you will be getting the uh, marks. Okay? So okay, okay, sir. So anyway, it will be hundred if you have scored all the nine question correctly. You will get hundred hundred. So we yeah. convert all the score to hundred only out of hundred. Okay, sir. So don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. So question number one point seven. Uh, sorry, uh, activity one point seven. Uh, I think this is correct, right? Variable data type does not constrain the operation that can be performed. Mm -hmm. No, no, sorry, it does not constrain, right? Yes. So this is false, no? It 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 does constrain, right? You cannot perform the arithmetic operation with the string values, right? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So Thank does you, not uh, uh, false. Okay. So any can any other doubt check, being great? <coughs> sorry. Uh, so can you check activity question two point two question number one? Yes, uh, second week, no? Okay. But yes. any any doubt in grade assignment week one? Anyone? No, sir. Question number fifth. Uh, only question yes, number five. No, sir. Okay. Um, hi, I have a doubt in graded assignment. Sir, I have also. Hmm, which question? One second. Except fifth question, except any fifth other? Question. No, uh, okay. Please, we'll remove that question. question. Okay, seventh question. Right. Seventh question. Hmm. Oh, okay, let me share my screen. Except fifth question, uh, you can ask me. Hmm. So, seventh question is this one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have a given procedure, compute and store in variable x, okay? If execute on shopping bills data set, assume that there are three total three shops in the data set, okay? So, arrange all the cards in a single point. So, we have arranging all, all the cards in a single point. Then we have a four variable a, b, c, x and initialize them to zero. If pile is empty, then stop the addition and start from uh, step nine. Okay. So what is given to us? Okay. Read the top card in pile one. If shop name is SV store and customer name is Nija, then set a equals to one. So what does this mean? 
sir can we get this type of format of question in quiz one uh, yes you can get here yeah. sir this represents neeraj has bought how many times from sb store how many times he has purchased from sb stores we are setting a equal to 2 right so a will how many times it will indicate because we are not incrementing the a okay are we applying the my look no right so simply set a equals to one if shop name is b and customer name is nirja then set b equals to one if shop name is sanjan and customer name is nirja then c equals to one so can I, what i can say from this three statement if value of a is one means that Ninja has visited the SV store. If value of B is Ninja has visited Big Bazaar, right? If value of C yes, is sir. one, it means that Ninja has visited the Sun General, right? So this what I can yes, say sir. from this A B C. If value of B is equals to zero, it means Ninja has not visited the Big Bazaar, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. Then we are moving the current card to another pile called pile two and repeat from step three. Then we update the value of X as X equals to A plus B plus C. So what does this X will indicate? That's the question, right? So what will even yes, compute? So yeah. So number of bills in the data set. So option D. Yeah. It's sir, not a number it of could bills. be sir number of bills in the data set which belong to Nirja because sir, there are only three stores in the in total. <clears throat> SV store and Big Bazaar and Sun General. Mm -hmm. Sir, if Nirja has purchased, then it must be total bills that he has bought. No, if what if Nilja will uh, again purchase the like from the same yes, store? Sir, if yes, sir, sir a will remain a one. Yeah, no, sir, but it will be increment. We are not in incrementing now. We are just set equals to one. We are, it is not a equals to a plus one, right? We are not incrementing okay, the sir. value of a. It is a equals to one. It is not a equals to a plus one. Increment means we are every every iteration we are incrementing the value of a. In that case, we are counting number of times Nirja has visited the SV store, right? Okay, sir. I understood, sir. Suppose instead of A, it is A increments uh, by one, then we can say, yeah, number of bills data set which belongs to Nirja. But it is A is not incrementing, right? So simply it yes, means how, uh, Nirja has visited these three stores. So number of distinct stores which Nirja has visited, that's yes, it, sir. right? Okay, Option sir. B. I understood. Yeah. Sir, sir, I have doubt in question number six. Question six. number six. Hmm. Okay. So, what's your doubt? Procedure is executed. Sir, hmm. I have calculated. I get uh, both of the S two. Both of the two type of student was born in first half and second half. I get equal number. I, so I take option C. That was the wrong answer. Uh, you have to check that no, option number eight. Uh, step number eight. See, uh, if A I is less than B, then set I, C I got, I got A is equal to 15 and B is also is equal to 15. But why you we need a uh, count here? Because we sir, here processor is given. The yes. date of birth of the 1st January to Sir, he has calculated oh. the, num uh, the number of students based on the cards. So like we have visited are. the data set. That's why he has got it uh, incorrect. Yeah. Oh, no, you have to follow this particular procedure, right? Step number eight. Yeah. This is the main thing. So here, if you observe, like uh, we have all the cards in the pile one, maintain ABC variable, initialize them to zero. If pile one is simply stop that and go to step it, okay? This is the top card in the pile one. Now, what we are saying, if date of birth is from 1st January, January 30 June, right? Sir, then here we are. Uh, yes. In, in this question, we have to not use to card data set. Score data we have, set. Yes, we have to like this question is based on scores data set, right? But you is like you don't have to uh, use the actual uh, values or data, right? The simply template is required. How many columns are there? I, I use actual values. How so did you find the number uh, fifteen number? Bro, uh, I get from I don't know. So you are saying that you have got 15 uh, students number. How do you have get it? No, no. You have actually. You don't have to go to there. Okay. In in such type of questions, just follow the procedure. And we I are not know. asking for any numerical value here, right? So you don't need to count. So simply date okay. of birth from first January 30, 
given this then increment the value of a so here we are counting number of students who are born between this uh, two date right so this is basically a, a first half right yeah so from okay, this okay, step sorry, we I can directly it. say hmm. okay i got so Okay. Huh? Sir, yes. Sir, first, I will take week one doubt. Uh, yes. Question number sir, nine, week one. Question, sir, in question number six, why option four is not correct? Option four is correct only, na? Mm -hmm. Question number six. Mm. No. When all four, when all students are born in second half of the year, no, this is not correct, na? Question number six. It sir, based sir, on this particular condition. condition will be true. So huh? is this is sir when all students are to... born in the second half of the year then also the condition would be true yeah so all students means like uh, value of a will be uh, zero right yes sir so zero will be less than any value when all the born in the student when there are more students yes. born in second half than in the first half uh, but yeah, that's not. We have to check from a score data set, then we get the correct answer. Yes. No, yeah, we don't I need to we count. We don't need to check that. No, no, we don't need to count. We have to look at the template. Okay. So if you observe in quiz, you will not get this data set. You will get a template of the data set. So here you can see all data sets template, right? So this image will be present in your exam in your question paper. Okay. Okay, so, so based on that, you can answer. Yeah, in I think in first three question you need to use the data set. Okay, so there we need to find out the value, right? Sir, yeah, but, but sir, option sir, so in that case, we need to check the two. data set. Hmm, yes, so I did without checking it. No, no, for question number six, uh, if a is greater than b, then set to one. Yeah, yeah, we, so, we, so we don't need to check the data set here. Yeah. So can you take it to question number five? Question number five, this I think. No, no, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, so here in row two, uh, it's written name uh, Akhil. So, hmm. but name is a string. Uh, wasn't this supposed to be in a uh, quote, double quote? No, this is not a quote, right? It's a table, right? So in the quote, we have to write in a, a string variable, okay. right? Okay, yeah. sir. So it's, it's a table, right? So we are just uh, checking whether the structure is followed or not right okay sir. yeah so if you observe your quantity is two price per quantity is 85 but cost is 85 only right so it should be two into 85 so this is wrong right yes sir row number four similarly if you observe then what are the other things uh one one more thing is wrong here i think the answer is five so two... yes sir so does pan yes, and does pan. Uh, sorry just pan row and the Maggie row. Okay. Ah, okay. You can, you can, yes, sir, you can, can you mute? Mm -hmm. Lots of background noises there. Can you please mute? Yeah. Okay. Ah. Okay. Sir, question number nine. Question number nine. Sir, in question number six, why option four is not correct? Uh, but uh, when all students are born in second half of the year, so based on the score data, if you observe, uh, you will get this answer, right? Because there is some entry for this, but you don't need to count though how many number of students, like 15 or 16. But, sir, in step eight, the condition should be satisfied, and option four satisfied the condition. Yeah, but if you observe score data set, uh, there you need to see a template, right? So in that you can see uh, students is there in this particular uh, time frame, at date frame, right? There is Daniel to June. So there is some students. So that's an option. This will be more appropriate when there are more students born in second half. Okay. So yeah, that's fine. Option D is not correct. So what's the issue in question number nine? Sir, although I got the correct answer, I got marks. Mm -hmm. But uh, sir, if I can you, you can scroll the down. Mm -hmm. Sir, here in uh, row three, where in where in varied value of part of a speech, 
and the incorrect data type of part of a speech sir in the table it is mentioned value and there is not mention any data type so are we supposed to take this also for the uh, data so type row number any... 3 yes sir so part of speech is adjective right and data type is string only right so it is string only no sir so there is not mention a string if there is the another column mention the data type name string count and uh, no no see you have to refer to words data set okay so just check any our data set card here you can find part of speech is basically string only right so instead of adjective if i just mention 10 here then in that case it will be wrong okay sir right for example letter count cannot be negative right so invalid value of letter count for example card number is abc right so sometimes it card number can be a, uh, this one right but if you observe what is the card number which data set words right so it's a 0 1 2 3 it's a integer right so that's why this row one uh, is incorrect data type of card number okay any doubt in question number 10 anyone sir no. question number 8 okay what is question what is your doubt question number 8 yes. sir how step 6 is wrong i mean the repeat part i did not understand okay so what we need to find out we have to use shopping bill data set at the end of execution count stores the number of bills generated from sv stores right generated from sv store okay we total bill amount more than 500 but the programmer might have mistakes in more, one or more steps identify the mistakes right so we are adding the all the cards in pile 1 maintain variable count equals to 0 if pile is empty stop the iteration read the card from pile 1 if shop name is sv store so this is satisfy my condition right generated sv store with bill amount is 500 total bill amount right And total bill amount greater than 500. So this is satisfying this particular condition. Then count should uh, increment, right? Then incrementing the count. So five, uh, step five is correct. What about step six? Move the current card to another pile uh, called pile two and repeat from step two. So do we need to repeat from step two or from which step we need so to? So count repeat? will be initialized to zero every time. Ah, uh, so that is not correct, right? So we uh, need yeah, to repeat from. Yeah, we have from... to repeat from step three. Yes, yes. Yeah. So until this pile is empty, okay, then iteration will be continued like this only, right? So step three. So that's why it is wrong. Okay. Uh, any doubt in grade assignment? Only question five is there, so I will remove this. So you will. Hello, sir. Huh? Hello. Okay. Yes. Sir, question number two. Question number two. Yeah. Okay. So like you need to refer to the. Uh, score data set here. Score okay? data set. And just follow the uh, procedure. You will get the answer because it will take a lot of time if I go to if I try to solve this. Any specific doubt you have in this question? No, sir. Okay, just uh, go to it. Like few, I, I know few students have doubt. Like if total is equals to two fifty, what to do? So in that case, you don't need to do anything. Okay, if it is not satisfying the condition, then we are not going to include that. Simple. So simply uh, leave to fifty as it is. Right? We are not including in A or B. Okay, 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 sir. Mm -hmm. Question number seven. Question number seven. Ah, I have already discussed this. So, what is your doubt in this question? Hello. Actually, I was in there in the meet okay. when you discussed. So, I didn't understand the whole question. <laughs> okay, see, uh, this is a procedure uh, compute and to store the variable x. And if executed shopping bills data set, so we are using the shopping bills data set here, right? So we need to find out what this particular procedure is doing. So this is the uh, same thing. Uh, we are just taking the pile. Uh, we are storing the card in pile one. We are initializing all the variables to zero. And then we are reading the card from the pile one, but the important step is five. So what we are doing here, 
if shop name is sv store and customer name is nirja then set a equals to 1 right so here we are not incrementing it is not increment by 1 right that equal to 1 it means okay. a equals to 1 so similarly we are doing for five, step 6 and 7 so shop name is big bazaar customer name is nirja b equals to 1 if shop name is sun sandal customer name is nirja then c equals to 1 so from these three steps can i say if value of a is 1 it means nirja has visited sv store right yes if value of b is 0 it means nirja has not visited big bazaar yes yes so if you observe so what is the value like update the value of x as a plus b plus c so from this a plus b plus c i will get how many uh, distinct store that nirja has visited right simple out of this three right one two or three so okay. option d will be the correct answer yeah so question 10 uh okay only question 10 is remaining okay and um... Okay, what is your doubt in question 10? I may not understand the question. Only. Can you explain it? Huh? I may not understand the question. So okay. Then... See, uh, Sudoku is executed using the words data set, right? What will A represent at the end of execution of this particular procedure? So, arranging the, all the cards in pile 1 variable a is to equals to zero if pile one is empty then stop the iteration with the top card in pile one if word ends with the full stop right if any word in the words data set if you go to words data set this is the words data set right yeah. if any words here you can see morning dot right full stop is there if this word is ending with the full stop and part of speech is adjective then we're incrementing the a right Yes. For example, in this case, morning dot. It is part of speech just now, right? So first condition is getting satisfied, but my second condition is not satisfied, right? Second yes. condition is that part of speech must be adjective. Then in that case, we are not going to increment the A, right? Mm -hmm. I want the word which ends with full stop and part of speech is no. adjective, right? Here and okay. yeah. Then only we are going to increment the A. Then we move the current card to another pile two and repeat from the steps three. So what we will get? Total number of adjective? Yeah. No, because this is the condition. If this condition is not there, first one, then I can say total number of adjective, right? If only part of which is adjective. Total number of words? No. Yeah. Number of adjective which are at the end of the sentence? Yes, right? Yes, sir. Because this condition will ensure that and both the condition number of adjectives which are not so this is not a correct so option c is correct okay yes sir. yeah okay so i think i have discussed almost all the question uh, from the assignment except first three and five so yeah sir, we can move on to a uh, practice uh, yes uh sir in my graded Sorry? assignment the question number five is different from yours uh -huh. uh, can i share my screen uh, i have a doubt no no don't worry, this question I will remove from the evaluation. So you will get marks for this. No, sir. Uh, this particular question is different for me. Like there is an, another question. Yes, sir. It, different for every. I think this question got updated just uh, yesterday or two days back. So this question will be wrong because image will be different, right? I yes, guess. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we'll give marks to everyone for this question, right? Okay. Question is wrong. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sir. But this is the correct question. You can take the screenshot, you can solve this if you want to solve. The answer is 5 here, okay? Hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, you can solve if you want. So, yeah, you will get the marks for this question, don't worry. There is this question of the pseudo code, and it is named in my assessment as fifth. Yeah, so, this question is wrong, no? Uh, in your in your case also. Yes, yes, I done. Actually, I have this question. How should I show you? Can I share my screen? No, no, no that's fine. Uh, it's a pseudo if, code question. Yeah, that is that question is actually wrong. The statement will be different, right? Oh. Same statement but different pseudo code will be there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so th that is wrong. That is not matching actually. So we'll give marks to everyone. Don't worry. But this is the correct question. What whatever I am presenting right now. 
Okay, but I had this a different doubt. The given information may have some mistake. This one, this is sanity of data. Mm -hmm. Your image yes. or your code is different, right? In question number five. Yes. So that's what I mean. That is the wrong wrong thing. Okay. So question is wrong there. So I will give marks to everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Don't worry. So don't worry about question number five. You will get marks for everyone. Yeah. For, yeah. So we'll yes, just yes, go sir. to activity two. Activity two point two. Two point two. <clears throat> hmm. Which question? Uh, first. There's only two question and first. It it should be false. No. While finding the maximum marks, the variable max was initialized to zero. If the following claim true, the variable uh, is the following claim true. The variable max can also be initialized with the marks of any card in the scores data set. Can we do that? No, sir. We can't do that because we uh, while finding max, we we initialize it to the value that won't be present in the whole data set. Uh, for example, marks we can take zero hmm. because that would be the lowest marks. See, but it is the answer is true here. Yeah. So yeah. we are interested in finding out the maximum marks, right? Yes, sir. So anyway, we are going to compare this max with our current value, right? What is the current value? Zero. Yeah. Uh, let's take one example. A score data set, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So where is the marks? Uh, total, right? Okay, maximum total we have to find out, for example, out of this, okay, from this row, last row, so last column. Okay. Now, if, if you initialize this max to zero, so anyway, we'll check whether this, this max is max less. Is less. Uh, sorry. Can you mute? Have Yes, sir. Have I, can you mute? Background noise is coming. Okay. Yeah, so what i was saying yeah so variable max was initialized to zero and we want to uh, store this max marks to this particular like maximum marks from this particular column so what if what i will do i will compare each and every value with the max variable right whether zero is yes sir uh, less than this or not if it is yes, not sir. less than uh, zero uh, then i will update the value of max to 210 right then again, I will compare 210 with 198. It is yes. less than 198 or not. It is not. And I will go for a next uh, row. In this way, I will go over. I will compare with uh, all the things. But what if I just initialize this max to, uh, for example, 150? Any any card. In that case, also, what yes. will happen here? This will be false. So this will be true. 150 less than uh, 150 less than 210. So we'll update the value of uh, max to 210. Again, I will compare with all the values. So anyway, the maximum value will become uh, will get stored in the variable max only. Even if initialized yes, to sir, any but number. It is saying that max can also be initialized with the marks of any card. Hmm. But here, the any card can also be the maximum scoring card. Yeah. So even if it is maximum scoring card, then okay. Uh, so that would uh, anyway be the max. Hmm. Yes. Okay. And if it is not the maximum scoring card, then it will get initialized, get updated to the maximum. Get marks. updated to maximum card. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you, sir. Suppose max is 250. So 250 is greater than 200. Then condition will yes. be false, right? So yes. it will compare with all the uh, rows until I will get this 252 value, right? Yes. Sir. The moment I found this greater than value, I will update with the max for 252. Then I will compare 252 with all the values, right? Yes, sir. This is how it, it will go. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other Thank any you, other doubt? No, sir. Okay. So let's try to solve practice assignment a week two. How many of you have solved this assignment? Can you raise your hand? PDF, PDF, PDF. Solution is also available. Okay. How many of you have solved the assignment? One, two, three. Okay, good. So we'll discuss this. Try to solve those questions.
Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so is this visible? This PDF? Hello? Yes, it's visible. Okay. Okay, so this is question number one, right? So here, what uh, what is statement? The procedure counts the number of students from Mumbai. Okay. No mistakes. Yeah, let's we try to solve, right? So while solving such question, try to uh, note the keyword, right? So what we need to find out. So here we need to uh, procedure counts the number of students from Mumbai, right? Whose total marks are more than the average total marks of from the scores data set, right? And it stores in the variable a. Let average t be the average total marks. In program one have many mistake. So at this condition, total marks are more than the average total marks from the score data set, right? And this average t is basically my average total marks, right? Here you can see. So I just need to take two condition: Mumbai and total marks uh, are more than average total marks from the score data set or not. So what I will do, arrange all the cards in pile 1, initialize, initialize variable a to 0. If pile 1 is empty, then stop the iteration, read the top card in pile 1. Now here you can see, city equals to equals to Mumbai. If this condition is true, and this and condition, right? So both the condition must be true, right? Then total greater than average of t. So what is total here? Whose total marks are more than the average total marks from the students. So this condition is getting satisfied, right? This is what we want to find out. Then we are add one to a. Then we are incrementing the value of a, right? So in this case, in this uh, case, I will get number of students from Mumbai who satisfy this particular condition, right? So that is basically a. So move the current card to another pile two and repeat from step three. So any any error in this particular thing? Some no, no errors. No, no mistakes. No mistakes right? Because we are getting what is required, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's why no mistakes. Okay, what about question number two? Yes, tell me anyone. So, step five may mistake. Okay, how? So, step two also. So, here we are dealing with the score data set and what we need to yes. count number of female whose physics marks are more than their chemistry marks but less than their mathematics marks and store it in the variable a right so this is my required condition right from here to here now let's try to see whether we are getting this particular require, requirement satisfied or not so we're arranging all cards in file one initialize variable a to one so is this correct initialize variable a to one no, no sir why no, sir. it should be zero hmm. it should be zero but why is if it is one because then it is the counting the number of uh, students yes who is uh, satisfying the conditions but uh, it should be so it should be initialized to zero because uh, we always start with zero yeah so if i initialize a to one it means already value of a is equals to one even if this condition is not satisfied right so i will not get the required output here right so steps two has a problem what about step three if pile one is empty then stop the iteration read the top card in pile one if if gender is f so we're interested in f right yes whose physics marks are more than their chemistry marks so physics marks are more than the chemi chemistry marks. That is also right, sir. Physics marks is more than chemistry marks. That is also right. But less than their mathematics marks, right? Then add one to A. So this is step six is correct, right? Step five is this correct. Is, yes, sir, correct. Move the current card to pile uh, no, two. Sir, step five is incorrect. Why? Sir, step five yes, is incorrect sir. because mathematics, mathematics marks is less than, greater than physics marks. Mm. No, it's mathematics yes, but less than their mathematics marks, na? Which means mathematics marks are greater than physics marks. Ah, yeah. ah, uh, uh, right. So physics marks is less than 
mathematics math right just to make the condition can you please mute lots of background noises there okay so yeah step 5 is also wrong then step 6 is correct so answer is a and b right 2 and 5 anyone any doubt in this question sir explain the step 2 step 2 no. yeah. see here a is initialized to 1 right but it must be initialized to 0 because we are counting it here right if a is initialized to 1 so what will happen even if this condition is not satisfied right still okay. the value of a is equals to 1 it means we are not getting the correct number right okay sir so our requirement is not getting satisfied here that's why a equals to 0 so we need, so we need to uh, start the counting from 0 right okay sir so, yeah. sir if the sir if, if in the data set uh, if the card number is 0 then we initialize variable to minus 1 card number is 0 so in then what in that case we initialize variable to minus 1 card number is 0 then in that case you can initialize variable to minus 1 yeah card number okay yes you can do that yeah if you if you want to compare yeah, you can do that card is zero okay ha huh. but we are not but that, we have to see which what is our condition right if you are counting number of card then minus 1 if in the flow uh, data set card hmm. number is zero huh. then then here we initialize variable to minus 1 Like, but for what? Which case? If you are counting, then you don't don't need to initialize to minus one. If you want to compare the card number with some other number, uh, like lowest card number like that, then in that no, case sir. you can initialize. If, if if any card number, suppose card number one two three is given, mm -hmm. and there is also card number zero is given with some data sets. Yes. So in this in this case, uh, we initialize variable to minus one because we we do not count anything. No, no. See. What is your requirement? That's what I'm asking. Why you are initializing to minus one? If you want to count, then there is no need of initializing minus one. We are always start counting from zero, right? But if you want to compare the card number, okay, then in that case you can initialize the minus one. What is the lowest card number if you want to compare? But if here we are counting, right? So there is no need to minus one. Counting is simply starting from zero, right? Got it, sir. Yeah. So, if you want to compare the card number, okay, you don't want to count the number of card. Then, in that case, you can initialize that. Uh, okay. Okay. So, Sir, I have a doubt in a week one's graded assignment. Can you please explain that? Uh, I already discussed all the questions. So, first, let me cover this. I will. I will again go back to week one. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So this is question number three, three marks. Okay. So this is given to us. The given procedure finds the number of sentences with maximum number of words from the words data set. Okay. Maximum number of words from the number of sentences with maximum number of words. Okay. So number of sentences with maximum number of words from the word data set. Fill in the blanks from the given choice and complete the procedure. Okay. Tell me what should be the answer and why. what is our requirement here what we need to find out Num number of sentences right with maximum number of words from the word data set so when it will be called a sentence when a word contains full stop yeah so when the when, sentence terminates yeah sentence with full stop right full stop right then we can see the sentence and with maximum number of words from the words so let's see the procedure arrange all cards in single pile called pile 1 initialize the variable a and b to 0 so a equals to 0 is there b equals to 0 and c how we count equals to 0 right pile 1 is empty then stop the iteration read the top card in pile 1 add 1 to variable a so we are adding 1 to variable a right if word does not ends with full stop then go to step 11 right if this condition is not satisfied what does this mean that the sentence is 
the it previous is sentence, sentence is still right? continuing. Ah, but the sentence is not completed, right? Not a sentence, right? Can I say like that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if word does not end with full stop, then go to step eleven, right? But if word ends with full stop, means it is a sentence. Then in that case, go to step seven. If A is less than uh, B, then go to step ten. Initialize A to zero. If A is greater than B, then store A in B. Assign one to count and go to step ten. Okay. So we need to find out uh, which steps. Nine one, right? What is the question? Let's fill in the blanks. The given choice. Yeah. So we need to find out the the step nine. Just tell me. So, find the number of sentences. So here we are taking any sentence or not. Now we need to find out man, with maximum number of words, right? Then. See option. How see? Why not A? Why not uh, B? Just try to put option here and just just check whether we are completing the requirement or not. That's it, right? So first we'll go with option A. If A equals to equals to B, then add one to count, right? Then simply, right? So what is happening here? If uh, A is less than uh, B, right? But B is zero, right? And A is also one, right? So this is not condition. This condition is not true, right? So we'll go to step eight. Now, if A is less than, uh, sorry, A is greater than B, okay. Now this condition is true, and then store A in B, okay, and assign one to count and go to step ten, okay. If this is not true, then we we'll go to step nine. If A equal to equal to B, so what is A and what is B here? Hello. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, the number of words and, uh, um, and uh, if um, yeah. and B was not um, initial other uh, initial initial like zero before. Uh, background noise is that I'm not able to hear you properly. That's why I'm not answering. Uh, try to rejoin the meet, okay? There are different. Uh, uh, you can use different microphone. Okay. Yeah. So, what is this case? If this particular condition is satisfied, if A equals to B, then we are incrementing the count one, right? So, this, uh, is this our condition can be satisfied? Number of sentences with maximum number of words, right? Yeah, so store A and B, assign one to count, and then go to step 10. Yeah, so if A equal to equal to B, then add one to count. So if we do this, then we will get a required output. And then we have to re initialize A to zero because we don't want to continue with this particular uh, sentence. Because sentence is over, then we are initializing the value of A to zero. Okay, because we, are, we got our required sentence. So A is there, and the same thing if you observe, uh, if A equals to B, then assign one to count. Assigning is not a correct here, right? Assigning means count equals to one, okay, and adding means count equals to count plus one. Count plus one, okay. So this we can say increment or add, right? Increment or adding, right? Assigning is basically this one. We are assigning this, right? So please remember this wording, okay? Assigning and incrementing. This is the difference between. Uh, add and assign. Okay, so here also this assign will not be true. So anyway, we can, uh, please mute. Okay, then if word ends with full stop and a equals to equals to b, so direct condition is given. Add a equals to one. So option A and C will be correct. Okay, this is not correct because we're assigning. We don't need to assign because we need to count, right? So count means we need to increment. That's it. So please uh, be careful with the wording part. Assign and this uh, sir uh, there is a doubt with respect to question number three mm -hmm. uh, okay. if you see the uh, step uh, above uh, step number eight sir mm -hmm. uh, 
then uh, why we are assigning one to the count, sir? We should add one to the count. We are here. Uh, in step number eight, sir. Uh, say no. if uh, step number seven is not satisfied, we'll come to step number eight. Hmm. And if uh, A is greater than B, we won't be going to step number nine. If this condition is true, then we will not go to step number nine. So right? the count should be uh, incremented. It's not not to be assigned. If I am wrong, please let me know. Um, if A is greater than B, then store A in B and assign one to count. Uh, we should increment the count rather than assigning the count. That's my assumption, like presumption, after solving the problem. Uh, see, if you increment the count here, then in the okay, so A and B. Because anyway, we are going to uh, step ten to initialize to zero, right? Zero. But yeah. uh, when you see the condition, sir, uh, say if A is less than B, uh, like B is greater than, we'll immediately initializing A to zero. And if mm -hmm. suppose A is greater than B, uh, we will increment the count because we won't be coming to A, uh, see the next condition, step nine. Mm -hmm. So we need to increment the count if you are going to uh, check the word. So that um, might not be true if I assign one to the count. So I got a doubt in that it should be the incrementing the count rather than assigning one to the count. So I just want to cross check it. No, no. See, uh, what, A, what A indicates here, and what B indicates here, Sir, it's the uh, uh, the uh, number. Uh, say if we start the number of words in a sentence. A sentence. is yeah. so A is directly number of words, right? Because there is no condition to step five, right? Uh, sir, like uh, I take an example. Uh, take any example as a sentence, one sentence, and try. Mm. I try to solve with that sentence. Mm. Then I found uh, I stuck at step number eight because since it's assigning count to the one rather than incrementing the count, so the count was not incremented there. So if you just give us the example and explain as it fix the example, okay. then that, that will be more clear for me. Okay, just a second. Uh, take the data set. Based on which data set words, right? Words, words, words. I will just take two sentences, okay? Not go through entirely because it will take time. So two sentences will be enough. Right? Okay, so first sentence, it was Monday morning, right? Uh, is this visible? Yes, sir. It's visible. Yes, sir. So my first sentence, it was Monday morning because on morning I have a full stop. My second sentence will be Swami has selected to open his eyes, right? Can you see the full stop here? Uh, yes. yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So what we'll do here? Uh, let me erase this part. Okay. So initially A, B, and count is zero, right? Yes, sir. Sir, B is tracing the maximum number of words in a sentence, isn't it? So equals to zero, B equals to zero, and count equals to zero, right? Zero. This is my initial state. Sir. Now pile one is empty. Okay, read the top card in the pile. I am reading the top card in the pile one. So it is okay. it, right? It, it, it is. The value of A is one. One. Add, add means I need to increment, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Now here the value of a is one because zero plus one one right? Yes. The, it will satisfy condition word ends with full stop. No, right? No. So it is not ending with the full stop. So I will go to step number step 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Directly, okay. And what step 11 yes. is saying? Go to step three. three. Yes. Right. So okay. until this condition is satisfied, I will not going to do this any step, right? Yes, sir. Understood, sir. So until four, we won't be going one, two, three, yeah. four. So value of A will be four, right? Yes, four. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Now at four, word ends with full stop. Yes. So it ends with full stop, right? Yes. So this condition is not true. So I will not go to step 11. I will go to next step then, right? Seven. Yes, sir. Whether A is less than B, value of A is one, value of B is zero. Is this true? No, then I will sir. go to step eight, right? Eight, sir. What is four greater than zero? Yes, yes. It is true, sir. 
then yes true true right now your doubt is here right yes do we need to assign or count now tell me so let's say you want to assign it sorry you want to increment it right sir now what will happen here I what will, will the value of count it will be one it will be one right one but what we want number of sentences with maximum number of words from the word data set so if you want to assign count to one so here the value of uh, count will be one right sir okay then uh go to step 10 reinitialize a to zero right so we initialize the value of a to zero then i will go to next sentence right yes sir same thing will happen again because value of a is still zero sir right sir up till where i is right yes sir so one two three, three four five, five, five six, six seven 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 and in this condition is true Sir. Seven greater than uh, zero, right? Sir. Because value of b is what? Uh, it's four. Uh, value a of b is, is four. Seven greater four. than four. Four. Yeah, seven greater than four, right? Four. Yes. Seven greater than four. So again, I'm counting this, right? According to you. Yes. Is this correct? I don't want this, right? Uh, sir, uh, like uh, then I am just assigning the count instead of uh, counting. Yes. So uh, that not means... getting incremented. Yes. Hmm. Because so if what... this is the sentence having the maximum number of words, hmm. the count will be two, right? Yes. I don't want that, right? I want a equals to equals to b. So what does this mean? It means that my next sentence will have the uh, seven, right? Seven and previous sentence was the seven, right? Okay. So maximum number of sentences with the maximum number of words. If there's only one sentence having the seven, then it will give me count one only. If okay. there are two sentences having seven, then count will be two, right? Okay. Did you get my point? Uh, yes, like, sir. Uh, you meant to say, sir, uh, seven is equal to seven, then uh, that time we need to increment the count. Yes, instead because, of, uh, hmm. okay. because we are in this number of sentences, maximum number of words. And I, I am considering that this is the sentence having seven words, having the maximum number of words, right? Mm, right, sir. You can take next sentence also. He considered Mondays especially unpleasant in the so what is how many word? One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, right? Eight. eight. Now this must be my uh, next uh, sentence, highest number of word, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But you're counting, you're incrementing now here. I don't want this. Yes. I, I just want to count when the number of sentence with the maximum number of words. But here already the count is three, right? I don't want this. Understood, sir. Understood, yeah. so sir. Assigning one is there. Yeah. Sir. If you assign one to here, then it will be yeah. good, right? Yeah. Assigning equals to one. So every time I will assign only one, that's it. Yeah, until this condition is satisfied, right? Sir. Now suppose previously was seven, right? And here how many? Sir. Eight or nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Yes. Uh three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. For example, I will remove this in. Only seven uh words are there, right? Right, sir. So in that case, this condition will not be true because seven is not greater than seven. Seven. In that case, I'll go to step nine. Step then will, nine. Then I will increment the count, right? Right, sir. In that case, I will get the number of sentences, maximum number of words. Right, sir. And after even after going all the iteration, if I have one more sentence at the last having same uh, number of words, so then count will get increment to two, all right? Right, sir. Yeah. That's understood, sir. Okay. Great. So please uh, be careful with the wording. Yeah. So I hope this is clear to everyone, right? We have yes, explained yes, this in detail. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Now question number four. What a minus? Sir, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Sir, noise is coming. Uh, Nehal, uh, try to uh, rejoin. Okay. So question number four now, what will A minus B represent after execution of the following procedure using the shopping bills data set? Arrange all the cards in pile one, variable A and B to zero. So A equals to zero, B equals to zero. Pile one is empty, then stop the iteration. Read the top card in pile one, okay? So this is the thing. Now what is step five here? If bill contains an item milk, then add one to variable. Add one to variable means what? A equals to? A plus one, right? And what is my condition? If item equals to milk, right? 
item equals to equals to milk. Then only I'm going to increment the value of A to 1. Mm -hmm. If name equals to Srivatsan, then will contain an item milk. And again, will uh, contain an item milk, then add B to 1. Then B equals to B plus 1. But in which case, when name is Srivatsan and bill equals to, sorry, an item equals to milk, right? Move the current card to another pile called pile 2 and repeat from step 3. So what I will get A minus B. So first tell me what is A, what is B here. So step 5 will give me A, step 6 will give me B. So what is A and what is B? All the bills that item contain milk. So A will means uh, all the bills that contains the item milk, right? Correct. Yes. What about B? Srinivas bill which contain item milk. Okay, the customer Srivatsan having the item milk, right? Now, if yes. I subtract this one, A minus B, what I will get? Sir, so the answer will be number of bills that has milk components uh, that has been bought by other than Srivatsan. Other than Srivatsan, because a will contain all the milk items, right? Bought by yes, everyone. But everyone B, who has bought milk. Huh, B will contain only the items, uh, like milk item bought by Srivatsan. So if I bought remove this from A, so remaining will be other than Srivatsan, right? Other than Srivatsan. Yeah. Number of bills other than Srivatsan which contain the milk item, right? Option C is correct. Hmm. Any doubt in this question, anyone? No, sir. No, sir. No doubt. Okay. No, sir. It's clear. Okay. Great. So question number five now. So what will be represented after execution of the following pseudocode using the score data set? So arrange all cards in single pile called pile 1, initialize variable A2 and B to 0. So A equals to 0, B equals to 0. Okay. If pile 1 is empty, then stop the iteration, read the top card in pile 1. Now it is condition, right? What is the condition? Physics marks is not less than mathematics marks. So physics marks not less than mathematics marks means it is greater than mathematics marks, right? Is this true? Yes, sir. Why yes? Yes, sir. sir yes, sir. It may be equal. Ah, equal also. No? Or equal equal no, also. Yes. Than or equal to also. Not less means equal can be also possible, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so sir. Be careful with these such notations or such things. So, yeah. Then store physics marks. Sorry, what is given? Then store physics marks minus mathematics marks in A. So, A will be physics minus mathematics right and if a is greater than b then store a in b okay uh move the card card to other file and repeat the step three so we need to find out the value of b so for this we need to use score data set so just go to scores data set this is the template okay it's the video Yeah, so we need to, uh, 30 rows are there, right? So I think we need to go to each and every row. So the condition is that physics mark is not less than mathematics mark. Then only we are going to value of uh, store value of A, right? So just go through it, find out the row in which the physics marks is greater or equal to mathematics marks. So physics marks, no, this is not correct. This is not correct. No. Yes. So. Card number three, you can see physics marks is greater than or equals to mathematics marks, right? Can you see this? Card number three. Hello. Sir, yeah. yeah. But whatever I have written here that you understood, right? Okay, yes, up to sir. step three. No, sir, up to step three, no doubt. Yeah. Step four is simply we are reading top card in file one. What is step five here? If physics marks is not less than a mathematics marks. So physics marks is greater than mathematics marks. So it means physics not less than is greater than or equal to mathematics marks. Right. Then we are adding A to what uh, store A physics marks minus mathematics marks to A. Right. And then we are comparing whether A is greater than B or not. 
but at this point b is zero for a first iteration then we are storing b a uh, store a in b right so just go to a score status set check physics marks greater than uh, mathematics marks no so if the condition is not true if this condition is not true then i will uh, go to next step right so what will happen here a is zero b is zero anyway this condition is not true so i will go to step seven again i will go to step three step three means again i will uh, compare the second row this is not uh, true this is also not true but here card number three is true 53 is greater than 42 so 53 is greater than 42 so this is true then i am storing the value of a to physics minus mathematics That's basically 53 minus 42 so that will be around 11, 11 right 11. the value of a is 11 and what is the value of b zero right yes sir so this condition is true then at step number six at step number six what will happen then if value of a is greater than b then store the a in b then b equals to a right sir huh? so b will represent the last difference between uh, physics and mathematics sorry sir b will represent the last difference between physics and mathematics right uh, last largest not largest. last huh? sir last largest, because... largest. Oh yeah, largest, yes, 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 larger, yes, yes, mm, yes. Yeah. So here it is eleven, right? So eleven is greater than b. Then store the value of uh, a in b. Now in the next iteration, the value of b updated to eleven, right? Again, then just go through row by row and see, uh, check the difference. Then compare with the b value. If it is correct, then uh, store in the b so in this way you will get the largest difference right between mathematics and physics so what is the answer 28 right so just go through the cards so this is 11 physics uh no what is this how much 21 then one uh, i don't know how it is six eight not two this will not be there no uh 12 we can check. Uh, any, anyone has solved this question? At which row we, it is satisfied? Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay, just uh, go. Okay, go yeah. through yeah. this. So simply, we can uh, first. First of all, we have to check the condition yeah. in the in this data set, and after that, uh, 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 move to the next uh, next step, like. If the condition satisfied, we simply no. uh, add the value of uh, a uh, a b. in the b. Yes, for this type of question, we ask for numerical value, so you need to go through a, a data set, right? So in this way, if you keep comparing it, just go to row number twenty-four. Here you can see seven to two forty-four. So difference is twenty-eight, right? So at this particular point, the difference will be maximum. Okay. So value of uh, b will be 28 only, right? So value of uh, b will be 28. Okay. So every item you need to go through and compare this uh, basic condition. That's it. Try to solve this question. It will take time, but try to uh, solve question. Try to uh, compare with each and every row. You will get the answer. Okay. Any doubt in understanding this question? Question number five. How to approach? No, sir. Okay, okay. So, question number six. <clears throat> so, given procedure to execute on the score data set, what will mean represent after the execution of the procedure? Arrange all cards in single pile called pile one, A, B, C, and mean 200. So, A equals to 1000, B equals to 1000, C equals to 1000, and mean also equals to 1000. Now, if pile one is empty, then stop the iteration and go to step nine. With the card, ah, okay. So, what is the what is the thing here? What is happening here? Is anyone? Yes. So, uh, can I speak now? There is no background noise, hmm. okay, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, in this, what happens um, in step five? So, uh, they see the maths marks against uh, the values lowest by marks mm -hmm. and if it is less then that is stored similarly for physics marks 
uh, the lowest, if it's uh, lower than uh, whatever is the value in B, then that gets stored. And same mm. for chemistry. And then mm. in the end, it moves down to step in step nine and 10, they start comparing uh, the marks uh, like for the same card, like A, B, uh, and C. And whatever is the minimum marks among the three that gets stored finally in minimum. So minimum- The lowest marks uh, subjects. Yeah, lowest marks across all the three subjects. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what A will store? So lowest marks is A mathematics. Maths. mathematics. Yeah. Lowest in maths. It will yeah, store B in chemistry. Yeah, B for physics chemistry and C for C. chemistry. C right? for chemistry. So lowest marks in three respect to subject A, B, C. Yes. Then move current card to another pile called pile two and repeat from step three. So you said for the same card, right? But we are repeating the step again from the step eight. Not first time if it is there, because mm. first uh, all of them are thousand, thousand, thousand. So for mm. the first card, uh, all the uh, three values will be stored updated will, will be from mm. the same. Right. For the first time, the next is the from the second um, iteration step. Um, it will not do that. So only so, if the uh, marks are less than the previous values of A, B, or C, they're all going to get updated. Hmm, right. Yeah. So we'll but compare. But when the iteration is over, huh. uh, then A, B, or C will get will have the lowest values, uh, marks value, and then in step nine and ten, these values will be compared among uh, themselves. So A value of A, B, and C. Okay. And among them, which is the lowest, that will be stored in minimum. Okay, great. Finally. So, can I say A, B, C represent the lowest marks in physics in entire data set, uh, like with respect to subject, mathematics, physics, and chemistry? Yes. Subject-wise. Yeah. yeah Subject-wise, lowest yeah, subject from entire data set. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, yeah. what is happening at step 9? If A is less than B, means lowest marks in <clears throat> mathematics, mathematics. B, then store A in mean. mean. Okay. Otherwise, or B in mean. Otherwise, means if this condition is false, right? Mm. If C is less than uh, mean, okay. <clears throat> now, suppose value of A is 67, value of B is uh, 47, value of uh, C is 80, okay? Now, mm. value of A is less than B, right? So, A is less than B. This condition is satisfying. No, right? No, no sir. It means I will store B in minimum. What is the value of B now? B will be 47. 47. B will be, B will be 47, right? C less than. Yeah, so sorry. B mean will be 47, right? Sir, minimum would be 47. Yeah, mean will be 47, right? Yes, sir. Nice. Now, then go to next step. C is less than mean. 80 is less than no, sir. No. No, no, right? sir. no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. False. So, what mean we store? Lowest marks, right? Among all the three. Can I say that? Lowest marks across all the subjects? Option D. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Instead of 80, if you just check for 20, then what will happen? Value of mean is 47. Now, at this particular point, 20 is less than 47. So then we are going to update the value of mean. Otherwise, we will not update. Uh, otherwise, we will not do. So it means anyway, the value of mean will get updated to lowest marks from all the three subjects, right? Mm -hmm. So option D is correct here. OK. Anyone, any doubt in this particular question? No, sir. Uh, excuse me, no, sir. Uh, yes. So I have a doubt, but not in this question. Uh, for example, uh, we have four variables. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so A and B are initialized to zero, and uh, mm -hmm. Y is initialized to thousand, and there is a variable X, and it is initialized to none. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now uh, we can assume so, uh, shopping bills data set here. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, we have taken uh, two shop names. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, as we store and sun general yeah so now here yeah. uh whenever we see as we store we have will increment a okay 
whenever we'll see sun general, we'll increment B. And Y is initialized to 1000, sir. Why, Why is it initialized to 1000? OK, then. OK, so whenever we will see uh, SV store, we will increment A. And whenever we will see sun general, we will increment B. And and uh, if A is less than Y, then we will store the value of A in Y and X to that uh, shop name. Uh, are you talking about a specific question? Uh, uh, yes, it is a specific question, but it's a bit different. But uh, it's from graded assignment week. So graded thing we cannot discuss, but what? You see, that's why I'm making trying to make it a general. Uh, so that... Okay, yeah. So you said a zero, b zero, y thousand, x none. Then yes, it's none. Uh, if we'll see a specific store S V, then we'll increment uh, a, and if okay. we'll see sun channel, we will increment b, and whenever a is hmm. less than whenever a is less than y, we'll uh, update the value of y in a. Update the value of y in a. Okay. Huh. But here a will not be reinitialized to zero. A if a is one, then y will uh y will be one and a will remain one only. And if whenever we will see another uh, as we store, we will increment to a to two. Hmm. And uh, same for b. Where whenever we will see b, uh, send journal, we will increment b and we'll check if b is less than y. And if b is less than y, then we will update y uh, value of b in y and x to that shop name which uh, uh, which was updated for y. Hmm, okay. So, so here, uh, uh, my doubt is, if we won't uh, reinitialize A or B to zero, for hmm. example, we have seen Sun General or SV Store one time, then A becomes one, and we have seen Sun General uh, second times, then A becomes two. Sorry, SV Store second times, then A becomes two. So. Hmm. For that case, if A would be reinitialized to zero, then A anyway, then Y will always be bigger than A. All the data that is there. Hello? Huh? So if we won't yes. reinitialize A to zero, hmm. then uh, even if uh, um, send general is seen only one time, then it won't be updated in Y. For example, yeah. A is one. Mm -hmm. and y is 1000 then y becomes 1 and a is only 1 and now b becomes y even if b is seen sun general is seen even one time then it won't be get updated to sun general x uh, okay so a1 then we are going to store value of y2 okay so y1 right and b is also 1 yes sir so you are saying in the next iteration uh, if we don't uh, in reinitialize so it will not get updated, right? Yes, because the condition with checks is uh, if A or B is less than Y, then only Y will get uh, uh, updated mm. to that value. Uh, OK, I need to check that question. Uh, which question you're talking about? Which question number? Yes, a graded assignment question number six. OK. I will check that question. Maybe the context will be different, OK? OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mm. OK. We'll discuss that. Then, <clears throat> what is question number seven here? Yes, tell me. Uh, here is the pseudo here is the code, right? So up till now we have discussed the procedure. Now we are dealing with the pseudo code. So this is pseudo code executed on score data set. What will count represent? Okay. So first, tell me how this if block works. Yes, anyone? Sir. Sir, when mathematics marks is greater than 75. Yeah, so whenever the condition inside the if block is true, right? Condition. Then only the uh, we will enter into the loop. Yes. Whenever the this block. condition is true, then only we are going to execute this block, right? Yes, sir. If this condition is false, then we will we'll not do anything. We will we'll go to the next enter step. Into the yeah. loop. We'll go to the next step. Simple. Next step. So this is what how if will work and if this condition is false in the case of else then i'm going to execute this one this is b mm. right and this is a if condition is true then i will execute a block if condition is false then i will execute b block okay b block this is what if else statement is 
So remember this one. I think in the next week you are going to get question based on this one. So the thing is that in this question, the count is 0, 1. We are uh, while table 1 has more rows, then read the first row from x from table 1 and see equals to 0. Okay. So variable says initialized to 0. Mathematics math is greater than 75, then value of C is increment to 1. If it is not greater than 75, then we go to a next step. Uh, yes. Please explain if and in else again. Okay. Suppose I have if else block. Okay. So this is if, then we have some condition. Okay. Any condition here, like physics must greater than 75 or multiple condition, but conditions. Okay. Then after that, I will execute whatever is written inside this particular if block. Okay. If this condition is true, if this condition is true, then only I'm going to execute the a whatever is written in the a block, this one, right? For example, this condition is true, then only I'm going to increment the value of c equals to c plus one. Otherwise, I will not increment, right? This is about the if block. What what is if else block? If this condition is false, right? Then only else will work. Then only we are going for else, this one b. Then B will execute. Okay. If condition is true, then A will execute. If condition is false, then B will execute. Mm. But in the case of only if block, if the condition is false, then we'll go to simply next uh, row. There is next no tip. yeah next in this case next if uh, mm. next step. Okay. We are not going to do anything if the condition is false. Okay. But if condition is false, so in some cases we want if condition is false, then do this. If, if this is happened, then do this. Right. And in that case, you can use if else statement. But in some case, you want if this happen, then do this. Otherwise, don't do anything, right? In that case, you can do if statement, right? Sorry, uh, the answer of the question will be the C number of students who scored yes. more than 75 marks in at most two subjects. Let me check. Okay. So if this condition is true, means C is incrementing. If this condition is true, it means C is incrementing. If this condition is true, it means C is incrementing, right? And this a block is executing every time right so what it will give me if c is less than or equal to 2 then only we are going to increment the count so so it is know? indicating uh, at most condition hmm. less equal to 2 yeah so number of students who got more than 75 in at uh, at most two subjects at most two subjects right in at most two subjects yeah so c is the correct option hmm. Okay, so simple uh, logic. Anyone any doubt in this part? No, sir. Okay, good. Because it's the starting point of uh, your pseudo code, right? You will get this code in uh, uh, up <coughs> weeks only. So, how this while loop is working? Anyone can tell me. Working of while loop. So, can you explain at least and at most? Okay. So at, just a second. At least and at most, right? Yeah. Sir, so in the case I, of at least, there will be the greater than sign. Yeah. So when I say at least two, it means it can be two, three, four, five, six, anything greater than two, right? That when I say at most two. two, at most two means less zero, one, two. Uh, less than or equal to two. So at most two will be less than or equal to two, and at least will be greater than or equal to two. Equal right? to two. Hmm. Okay. This is at least and this is at most. Okay. Yes, so what sir. about while? The while oh. loop execute the given block until the given condition in while is true. Yes. So mm, yes, sir. Mm. Indentation so, at the indentation ends. Sorry. Uh, so indentation in so what of matlab while loop khatam hoga yahi na indentation no no see suppose while loop uh, whenever this condition is true then only we are going to execute this particular block right and we are going to keep executing this block unless this particular condition is not satisfied okay? not satisfied yes for example let me uh, take it right, right down here while i is less than 4 then value of a equals to uh, a plus 1 okay then again i'm incrementing the value of i to i plus, I plus one. 1 and suppose i is 0 initially and value mm. of a is 0 initially 
right? So here i is zero, right? This condition is true, right? Sir, there is an error. You close the block before incrementing i. Sir, the value of a will be zero, one, two, three. Three value will be there. Hmm? Sir, in the third line, i is equal to i plus one. Before that, what you have written? Did you close the block? No, no. It, it, it shouldn't be like, closed here. Yes. This is like this. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. That now this is correct. Clearly, yeah. Hmm. So this is like this, right? So i is zero. So zero is less than four. This condition is true. And I will increment the value of a to zero plus one one. I, the value of i is two, right? I, and again, I will go again. I will go to y loop. I will check whether this condition is satisfied or not. Here you can see two greater than four, right? So two less than four. Hmm. Again, I will increment the value of a. Again, I will increment the value of i. In this case, i will be three. Okay. Again, this is true. Again, I will execute this particular value of a. So, value of a will be uh, three. Three. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, now here the value of i will get updated to four, right? In the fourth iteration. And again, I will go. Four back less to than this. four is false. Then yeah. the so this is not true. Then we'll terminate, terminate this block. while loop. Then we we'll yes. continue with the uh, next line of code, right? So a and i both will have same values. Both have four at the end of execution. Yes. yes. No. So no. It will. No, will yes, three, it, will, it will have same values, both initialized. No, both are equal to zero. zero. Nah, so zero, so first one, two, three, three, three only, right? Three will. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, in the case, uh, value hmm. of i will be of course, right. uh, one, then the second iteration will be uh, one, two, and three, and four. Yeah, both same will be there. Yeah. Yes, both have four, then, hmm. then it will go to while and check the condition will yeah. return false and exit out of the loop. So when this condition is false, then only we are going to terminate the while loop, right? So it will keep running the while loop unless this condition is false, right? If we didn't mention this I thing, what will happen then? Anyway, so this will run endlessly. Something yeah, like infinite times. Times. Yeah. So it will not execute. It will go to the next. What happened? Please mute. थोड़ा स्लो उड़ाना होता है स्लो उड़ाना होता है पूरा उड़ा करके दाना नहीं गिराना होता है here a0 b0 c0 right pile 1 has more card read the top card as in pile 1 now this condition is true if this condition is true means mathematics marks is less than physics marks then i will do this right if this condition is not true then i am not going to execute i will go to a next if block okay so this is the uh, pseudo code given to us uh, if mathematics is greater than physics then increment b and c if mathematics equals to physics then increment c only now, what will be the value of C minus A represent at the end of execution? Tell me. So what is A, B, and C? And at the end of execution, what A, what B, and what C will give me? Tell me what A, A will, will represent the number of students hmm. who have either scored mathematics marks greater than physics or mathematics marks equal to physics. Oh no. Why why A will indicate equal to physics? Due to the third condition, if x dot mathematics, uh, oh no, 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 sorry, sir, sorry, I, I just less than physics. mistaken C, it would be C what I have tell. Uh, number of students having uh, students mathematics having marks greater than physics marks. Sorry, less than physics marks, right? Oh, uh, yes, less than. What about B at the end of execution? What B will store? Mathematics marks greater Either great students would number of marks is greater than physics marks. Only this one? No, sir. Second one, second condition will be also true. Mathematics marks greater than physics marks. Huh. So number of students who score mathematics marks less than physics marks or greater than physics marks. Uh, math physics marks, right? So in both the cases, B will get increment. Yes, sir. What about C? C, mathematics marks less than physics marks or mathematics marks equal to physics marks. And mathematics marks equal to physics marks. No. So in, in short, I can say C will increment anyway. Yes, sir. Yes. 
all right. conditions all conditions right any time because all the three conditions cannot be true for at the same time right either this yes. will be true or this will be true or this will be true yes sir so c will anyway indicate number of uh, student i can say yes sir right in the data set so what the c minus a will give me c is basically number of students right was every time it is getting incrementing only irrespective of the uh, comparison right what c minus a will give me number of the student who have not uh, whose mathematics marks are not less than their physics marks uh, not less than right yes what is the answer number of student whose mathematics marks is at least as much as physics marks is this correct no number of student whose mathematics marks is are at least as much as physics marks what this at least mean mathematics marks either less it is equal, equal or it is greater yes it is correct right yes sir even if it is equal still we are uh, incrementing the value of uh, equal so it will not get counted in the a right because that condition also be false Anyway, A will not increment in that case if marks are equal, right? So option A is true. Number of students whose mathematics marks are at least as much as physics marks. Uh, B option at most no, at most is not the correct word here. C, whose physics marks are at least as much no. What about D? Number of students whose physics marks are at most uh, as mathematics. Yes, marks. it is correct. Physics marks at most at at so this one will like, like this, right? To. Right. So same condition only, right? Right, sir. Right. Yeah. Right. So option A and D is correct. Anyone any doubt in question number eight? No, sir. No, sir. Sir, okay. can you please explain it? Because I lost my connection, so I forget the previous step. Sir, I didn't listen. Okay. So what this A, B, and C will uh, give me at the end of execution of this pseudo code? Just look at this. What A, B, and C will give me? So here A is incrementing here only, right? When this condition is true, right? Yes. Sir. So it means it will be number of student whose mathematics marks is less than physics marks, right? Okay. Okay. Then only value of A is getting incrementing. So A will store number of student whose mathematics marks is greater than physics marks. What about B? So B is getting incremented two condition. First condition is that either mathematics marks should be greater than physics marks or less than physics marks, right? In both case, B will get increment, right? That it means uh, in line number four and line number nine, two conditions are satisfied for the uh, B. But for a single cut, it will both condition will not satisfy. Either max will be less or greater, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We yes. are running over a while loop, so it means from all the data set, right? Yes, but we check for these two conditions. Huh. Okay. So B will store number of students who got more marks in physics than mathematics or less marks in physics than mathematics right or is there right yes sir. what about c so c is getting incrementing here also yes. here also here also so yes. irrespective of the condition my c is getting incrementing right so, so yes. can i say c is basically number of student directly yes sir yes sir right so a will give me number of student mathematics mass less than physics b will give number of student whose mathematics mass is greater than physics or less than physics and C is the same number of students. Then C minus A will give me these two options. Okay. Yes, I got it. Now, what about question number nine? What is C minus B? Number of students with physics marks equal to mathematics marks. No. Uh, only that is the condition. Number of marks are equal to physics marks, right? Because B is basically less than or greater than, right? If we subtract from all, only remaining is equal to only, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So option A is correct. Any doubt in question number eight and nine? Anyone? No, sir. No, no, sir. Okay, great. Question number ten. How many questions are there? Eleven. Okay. Question number ten. This is the pseudo code using the scores data set. So what we are doing here? A, B, C. For A, B, C, uh, A, B zero. C initialized to false. So false is basically a boolean, right? Boolean. While file one has more uh, one cards, read it off card X from file one. Gender equal to equal to F. If this condition is true, 
then only I'm going to execute this block, right? If gender is female, then only I'm going to execute this block, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Great. So if this condition is true, it means if gender is female, then only I will check for this line number five. And if city equals to ten nine, then increment the value of A. So what A will give me? Number yes, of anyone? females from Chennai. Yes, number of mm, Chennai. Female from yes, Chennai. Chennai. Right. Now, what about this uh, while loop? While pile two has more card, read the top card from pile two. If city town equals to Bangalore, right? Sir, then, we will store the value of uh, number of male students for Bangalore. Not female, so. Hello. No. Number of male students for Bangalore. Yes, it would be male because there are only two genders in yes. our data set. Male and female. Right. If not, not female, it would be male. Yes. Yeah. So, but first condition is that city must be Bangalore, right? Yes, yes. sir. So, can you say here B is number of uh, male, male from Bangalore? From... Bangalore, yes, sir. Number of males from Bangalore city. Or number of, uh, sorry. People who belong sir, to Bangalore. But can be... we just uh, remove this nested if blocks and use an and operator between these conditions? It would result same, I think. Yes, it will result same only. No, and will be, yeah, if you want to A, sorry, if you hello? want to B, uh, yes, hello. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So what we are discussing? Yeah. If I put this condition along with this condition and right. So in that case, yes. what will happen? So cities should be Bangalore and gender should not be equals to F. So in that case, I will get number of number uh, of male students from Bangalore. So yeah. the nested if block can be replaced with this with and and um, what say operator and operator. And operator yes, in this condition, that. at least I hmm. can't say in general, yes. but in this condition, yeah. So because only only we have increment value of B, but what if I want have I want to have one more condition at, between here, say C equals to C plus one, right? So C will count number of students from uh, city Bangalore, right? In the because C is inside this A block, right? So in that case, you yes, cannot sir. use and if you want to compare, right? So depends on the uh, case study, right? Your requirement. But depending on the that. situation. A situation, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yes, sir. But with, if you put and and put this condition, so you will get the same output for B. Same output here. So B is basically a number of male students from Bangalore. From Bangalore. From Bangalore. From Bangalore. Okay. Now, what is A greater than B? So that means more number of female students from Chennai than number of male students from Bangalore. Then only C will be true, right? Then uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So what is it the is condition? a easy question, sir. More female student from Chennai than male student from Bangalore. Male students from Bangalore. Yes. Other we don't need to check, right? Who so is the correct of it? Any doubt in this question? Anyone? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Great. Then the last question. Okay, what is this question? This question is there in your practice assignment? Yes, sir. Okay. So principal wants to send to send students to her college to participate in annual winter college and loan. Secret data set normal. Okay, okay. Then we have a sequence number, name of a student, cricket, badminton, carrom. Okay, so these are the two cards, I guess, right? Yes, sir. So we have a two card. On the card, we have a sequence number, we have a student uh, name. Student uh, name and sir, sir, hello, games that played by the student. Sir, in name, but other ever. Hello, are you sorry? Sahil Yadav. This was Sahil sir, someone is asking you to convert it into the English uh, Hindi. Okay, take it. See, uh, question we get the We have a two card, right? Do card, eh? Or do card key information, care, a key sequence number, eh? Then student can arm, eh? Okay, what? How many sports? Right, cricket, badminton, or carrot. So, you know, but you have a Okay, please mute, please mute. mute. Okay, so you information of Nepal, right? Then, question me here using the created data set, Rihanna created a procedure to count the number of students. Okay, so please mute. Okay. Okay, so let me 
try to solve this question first then i will explain in hindi also okay so first thing is that sir so someone is creating nuance tinku ra this mute tinku okay so oh, yeah. principal sir i sir, think, I think it is disturbing please sir he is disturbing deliberately sir please take action against him so mm. Sir, it is too disturbing, sir. Yes, I remove. Kick out from the class. Kick out from the class. I remove a block link. Okay. Reduce when type span. Okay, so don't do such kind kind of things. So your email ID is recorded here. Okay. So the strict strict action should be taken. Yeah. So I think during orientation we have uh, given the rules. What are the actions will be taken? So don't do this again. Okay. Okay, I have blocked him. So the principal wants to send student of her college uh, to participate in the annual intercollegiate sports festival. She created a data set of student inter interested sports in the form of cards. Okay, so it means it Nikhil. Palak. Uh, Sir, please record his email ID, sir, and uh, send it to the Senate team. It's also fake name. No, 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 no. Palak Pandey joined regularly classes. I see. Nothing. Someone make his. Then who is disturbing? Someone make his fake name. Sir, please identify. Okay. I will change the settings to close. टेबल Yeah, I have changed the setting. Sir, for January term, I think as of now we all got the uh, ID, email ID. No, for qualifier for students. Qualifier. Yes, sir, qualifier. I'm also I'm also from from qualifier. Sir, I get I the official email ID. No, you're direct uh, into diploma, right? Yes, sir, diploma. That's, yeah, that's diploma right. in program. Qualifier student will qualifier. get that. No. Sir, where we can ask doubts because the discourse is also not working. Why right, it is not working? Sir, when we open the discourse, it show uh, you uh, you need a link to join the discourse. We don't have access. Yes, sir. I didn't have access for any subjects in the discourse. Okay. Uh, I can add you for a city, but I don't know for the courses. So better to write a mail to support team and put me in CC. Okay. I, I, I already mailed them. But uh, there is no reply from the side. Uh, so just... same for me as well. So when I don't have, uh, I can't join this course. You you can check your email ID. You must have got sure. uh, this course invite. You can check your spam email. Or if you didn't get a this course invite, uh, you can uh, write a email support and put me in CC. Okay. I will so... add you for a city course. But for other courses, you need to contact your respective uh, instructors. So can you share your email ID so we can add you in CC? Okay, so I have on the chat you can see. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, so let's me discuss this question first, and I will take that those issues. So we have a two cards, uh, not two cards. We have a cards uh, in which we are storing the student information, sequence number, student name, and the sports that the student can play. Okay. So this is given to us. Now, using the created data set, Rihanna created a procedure to count the number of students who process the following condition. Okay, we need to count the number of students. Okay, remember that the condition is that a student plays at least three games. Okay, and yes, student sir. plays either cricket or football, but not both. So, two conditions: student must play at least three games, or student play either cricket or football, but not the both. Right? But she made mistake in one of the most important identify such steps. Okay. 
So arrange all the cards in a single file. Yes. Initialize variable C F and X to zero. C to zero. F to zero. X to zero. Okay. If pile one is empty, then swap the iteration. Read the top card in pile one. If student plays at least three, uh, yes. Okay. If student plays at least three games, then go to step ten. Sorry. Sir, the class is not starting on YouTube. No, no. Uh, I will upload the recording on YouTube. So yesterday last was yes, sir. Oh, I will send vote to uh, support it's you. Not streaming. No, it is not streaming right now. I will upload. Okay, I will upload the recording. Yesterday of class. The yesterday class was. Yesterday class also. I will upload. Okay, I will send yeah. to studio team. Okay. There was some internet issue with the IDM thing. That's why. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we are at a step two, initialize C, F, and X to zero. And pile one is empty, then stop the iteration. Read the top card in pile one. If student plays at least three games, then go to step 10. Move the current card, pile two, and repeat the step three. So is this correct? What is the uh, error in this? How many in which steps? No, no it is not correct. Why? We, it's C plus F should be equal to one. Hmm. So, how, from where you can say that? Step eight, because uh, the uh, here is the here the condition is giving given either cricket or football, not both. So, huh. if we add them both, it should be one, not two, because if it is two, then it means it, she is playing both. 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 Yeah. So at step number five, we are only checking whether they play at least three games or not, right? But second condition we are not checking, right? Yes, sir. So we don't need to go to a step 10. Okay, so this is not correct. Step five. Rather, we should go to step six. Yes. If student plays cricket, then increment C. If student plays football, then increment F. Right? Yes. Then why what, what is the step eight? C plus F equals equals to what does it in, will tell me? It's so that means uh, the that student is playing, playing both the cricket and football. Sorry, uh, student is playing both cricket and football, cricket right? And football. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. If student is playing cricket, the value of C will be one. If it is playing football, the value of F will be one. So F one, uh, so one plus one two, right? So then it will increment the X. But I don't want this, na. So we only want either of, of the two. one. Huh. We double want equal to the two. So double equal to one only, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. So initial variable C and F to zero. Uh, C and F to zero. What about X? Okay, we are counting. Yes. Then move card to pile one. So step five and step it has the issue, right? This should not be there, and step one should be there, right? One should be there. So option step five rather than going to step ten, add it, go to step six, and incorrect conditional statement. Yeah. So option B and C will be correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is a mistake. Okay. Okay. I think we have discussed all the uh, questions or practice assignment. Uh, if you any have any issue, try to solve the question again, mm -hmm. okay? And then watch the video if you have any doubt. So that's, I have a doubt. Excuse me, sir. In question three. Um, Just a second. The answer given is either A or C, I think. Uh, which question number three? Practice assignment. Uh, yeah, this one, the same one which we discussed today. Question number three. Yeah. A and C, is no? Yes. So okay, so we can choose either or. Like both, 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 both. both can be there. Okay. Both options are correct. It is MSQ, both nah. options are correct. Yeah. Okay. MSQ, so I even guess. in the exam, if something like this happens, we should like we should um, choose both. This is multiple. This is MSQ question. Multiple select MSQ question. question. You it's can select MSQ. multiple options. Yeah. In MCQ, you can select so only so one option. I see it. It says just one step we need to fill. And then, like, um, it's a bit hard to understand that they can be two. No. Um, Either you can add this condition or this condition, you will get the same output. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we should check for that. Like, all possible, ah, possible uh, conditions yes, yes. which fit, we yes, should. Yes, yes. All mark possible that. conditions hmm. should yeah. be marked. Okay. Okay. So, can I ask doubt from ah, yes. the graded assignment? One. Okay. Okay. So first thing, anyone, any doubt in uh, practice assignment week two, anyone? No, sir. No, sir. No, right. So I will go to uh, yes. Can we create our own data? Uh, 
copy of these data sets in a programming language and uh, practice these questions uh, yes you can do that no? like like these pseudo codes you can try to implement in python if, if you know basic of python also you can yes, sir, I know. try to implement that okay so yeah so i think we have discussed all the questions from uh right in week two now what's the doubt in week one yes Sir, uh, the, there is a data type count so uh, da, uh, count data type should not take negative values but in the question number nine the answer is uh, marked as wrong question number nine uh, week one right week one, yes so in the lecture video uh, it is uh, said it is a subtype of integer data type Hmm. Tell me, which uh, what is your doubt, sir? Uh, the row number four, hmm. uh, the row number four should have incorrect data type because uh, the count is uh, uh, the count is a positive value. It cannot yeah. see the negative number. So data type is integer only, na? So data type is correct. The value is invalid here. It cannot be negative, right? Sir, like, so, but in the uh, video, it is said that it is a subtype of integer data type, which cannot take negative values. Huh, so it cannot take negative values, no? So that's an invalid value for row number four, right? So you are saying data type is also correct. This is wrong. No, it is taking integer value only, no? So, as lecture as in the lecture there is a subtype of it uh, which, which cannot take negative value so hence we should uh, put uh, we should put the very variable data type to account data type sir data type is integer it means ki uh, data type should be uh, integer value should be negative zero or positive so if we are talking about the data type it's correct but hmm. the later count, later count should yeah. not be ne in in negative yes. form if you see your data that's why it's correct yeah. it's yeah. Uh, uh, correct for data type, but not correct for value. Value. Data type is correct. Value, it is yes, invalid. Sir, I have a doubt. Okay, yes. Which question? Uh, seven. Question seven. Uh, what about this? Question number seven. Hmm? Tell me. We have discussed this, but yeah, what is the specific doubt? Sir, he is not responding. Hello. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. See. Uh, so, my doubt is that uh, the values of A and B, C would only be uh, equal to one only one time, right? Yeah. So not one time. We are iterating through a. Actually, it will not set. be uh, incremented. Yeah. Set equal to one only. Value will be one, but it will check for every case, right? It will not check every uh, if there is there are two data types. It will only be one because it will always uh, set equal a equals to one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got it. If Nirita so, has visited a Swiss store, then a is equals to one. So that's why it is distinct stores, right? Number of distinct uh, stores. Distinct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Any anyway, we have mentioned there, there are total three shops yeah. in the data yeah. set. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. So I have discussed uh, all the data assignment questions also, like uh, initially at the start of the session. So you can watch that. Okay, then question number five, I will uh, give marks to everyone. I don't know what happened, but uh, this question got updated somehow. Okay, so anyone, any doubt in week one or week two? Week three, I will really, uh, will inform the team. It is not released yet. So uh, we have TA sessions also. Uh, Wednesday, wait, uh, let me check the timing. Can you check the calendar? Uh, is it visible for you? Can anyone confirm? Yes, yes sir, we have received the. Right. So on Sunday, 10 to uh, 12, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 3 to 5. Okay. Because on the remaining yes, days, sir. we have a instructor session. So on those uh, four days, we have kept a TA session. Okay. Yes, sir. So you can discuss with them. Yeah. So please upload lecture on YouTube, sir. Yes, yes. I will send uh, to. So how many days it will take to uh, upload the YouTube uh, lectures on the YouTube? 
I will upload the. I will send uh, last sorry, uh, yesterday's session, but this will take time because it will take a uh, render. It will take time to render right video. So maybe tomorrow I will upload this one. Okay, sir. I will send. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, so that's it from my set. So week one, week two, we have done. Try to solve the assignment question again, back to assignment, then go for a credit assignment. Okay. Sir. Ah uh, yes. Sir, is it possible to extend the uh, submission date of other courses for you? No, no, we cannot do that. Okay, sir. We cannot extend the qualifier uh, deadlines. But qualifier, sir, like uh, we have four courses in this term, so deadline are for week one and week two for other courses uh, uh, will be the fourth. No, of you are directly uh, uh, direct diploma student, right? Yes, sir. Programming, yeah, yeah. So for diploma uh, courses, we have different deadline. I think Sunday is the deadline, right? Sir, uh, is it possible? Uh, no, no. Only for if there is some issue, some closer, then only will uh, extend. Otherwise, no. Sir, uh, what is the market uh, marking scheme of the grade assignments? Marking scheme. Sir, if we somehow miss the graded assignment to submit on the uh, on the deadline, will we get the second chance? No, no. So you have to submit the assignment before deadline only, and the before last submission yes, will be considered as a final submission. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So for qualifier student and for uh, so best two out of first three are something we considered. Okay. So try to submit it. So yeah. what, what, what yeah, is the question? Asking, asking what is the proportion of the marking scheme because it is out of hundred, right? Huh. But the points uh, do not. Uh, the how how are one or two points uh, in proportion to hundred? No. So out of uh, like if you just calculate the marks you got from week one and convert into out of hundred, that's it. If it is out of two twenties, just multiply by five. If it is out of ten, then multiply by ten. Uh, so that's the case. Okay. If it is 220, you divide it by five. If it, if it is from 20 mass out of like the assignment, if you see, I think it is from uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So two plus four, so six. The total marks of nine. the graded uh, assignment of uh, week one is twenty-three, sir. If you uh, count it. Okay. So two, six, three, nine, twelve. 15, 15. So 23. 22. Uh, no. 26, I guess. Okay. So sir. anyway, uh, um, the marks you get, we get converted to. Out sir, of you have subtracted only. the question number five. No, no, not five. Okay. If you if you not consider that one, right? Then 23. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. 23, yeah. sir. Yeah. So after 23, uh, the the marks you will get just uh, convert it out of hundred. Okay. Into hundred, yes, sir. Yeah, out of hundred, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Have a nice day. Nice weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you sir.